awfully apprehensive about the, uh, the final comments you're going to make there. So, not too bad, I suppose. Um, I'll be fairly brief, and uh, the slides will be made available to everybody. Uh, of course, I'm always around if uh, you want to come and network with me and uh, ask a question. So I'll, I'll skate over this fairly briefly uh, to ensure that I don't uh, steal the tide from uh, Mark, who's following me. Uh, Danny mentioned the yeah, 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 probably equally well known in the past, Clean Away, Onyx, uh, Lee Interest, etc. Um, 2008 sales there, 1.2 billion, we've been growing strongly since. Uh, the uh, more recent results will be published shortly. About 12,500 employees, a very large number of commercial and business customers, but equally, more importantly, and more than half of our business. Um, about 150 local authority contracts spread over more than 100 local authorities. Uh, so it really is a uh, call to us and we're pleased to see many of our, uh, our customers and hopefully also potential customers here today. Waste hierarchy, I mentioned that not because everybody's not familiar with it, um, but so just to say that apart from being an environmental guideline for us, it's actually uh, a key indicator for where we put our investment. Our investment for the future is going entirely in accordance with the, uh, the waste hierarchy. Hence, it's, it's about energy recovery, it's about recycling, uh, it's not about landfill. Um, there's certainly no new landfill sites in the pipeline from us. Talk about the market drivers that will influence the waste industry in the next five years. <coughs> Obviously, UK and EU legislation has a huge impact on the, uh, the market. Uh, if it wasn't for that, we'd still be picking up skips and tipping them in landfill sites, as uh, Paul said earlier. Um, it's quite a profound impact on the business because success or failure 20 years ago was measured as to whether you could pick up six skips a day with your truck or seven. Um, it's a very different market now as we move into a highly capital intensive and technology intensive industry. Landfill taxes has had and will have a huge <coughs> impact on the business. Um, I think that the, the impact on demand is we recognise in that it's driving both uh, local authorities and commercial businesses to uh, want to look for alternatives to landfill to avoid the landfill tax. That's logical, continue going up, and, and that's the demand side. What's often not recognised is the impact that it's had on the supply side. <coughs> Five years ago, there were about 2,500 active landfill sites in the UK. Today, there are less than 500. Um, just like the earlier, people are not opening new sites. Um, so it does create, apart from uh, you know, an interesting statistic, um, it does create an issue for the future of working five years hence. If more and more of those sites are closed and we go from 500 down to 300 or 200, where's the waste going to go? So unless the new facilities have been opened, there will be a capacity gap. Because the landfill sites simply won't be there. It won't be a choice of do you pay the tax or not. There will not be the landfill sites to uh, receive the material. Landfill diversion targets, clearly. CSR, a lot of the major blue ship companies now see uh, a zero landfill policy as important or carbon footprint policy as important. And we're seeing them uh, more and more active and interested in this market. Energy policy, clearly important, uh, not just from the environmental benefits, but in energy security. You know, every time you see on the news that the Russians have turned the gas off somewhere, it does really emphasise the, uh, the risks of being totally, totally dependent on uh, imported energy. Recycling targets have had a, an impact clearly, particularly in the local authority sector. Uh, they've been weight based so far. Um, I think over the next five years you'll see them become more sophisticated and probably be carbon based in some cases. Um, for instance, glass is a good example where that's a weight based approach, doesn't necessarily achieve the best environmental outcome. Value of recyclable materials, um, that's moving forward. The, we had a blip in the market a year or so ago. It's looking good again now. Um, we've got to recognize that uh, these materials will be in various different uh, qualities and standards because we're making a product. It's not waste disposal. We're manufacturing a product. We have a customer. There'll be a contract. It will define a specification for the output. Some customers may want to buy hamburgers. Some may want steaks. There'll be a different price, and we'll produce whatever the market demands subject to it being uh, compliant with regulations, of course. Penalty regimes on householders. The government uh, introduced a, a program uh, a year or so ago inviting local authorities for pay-as-you-go type uh, schemes. 
no local authorities so far have stepped forward to, uh, to participate in that. Um, we certainly are very concerned about penalty type schemes. Um, firstly, because we don't think it's the right way to drive behaviour. We think incentives are more appropriate. But secondly, we certainly didn't want our employees to be the people who had to go out in the streets and apply the penalty notices and get attacked by angry residents. So from a health and safety point of view, if nothing else, uh, we'd like to go down the incentive uh, view. Uh, we'd much rather be uh, congratulated by the residents for handing out marks and Spencer vouchers than, uh, than beaten up for uh, sticking a penalty notice on the bin. Climate change clearly always there as an issue. Um, commercial waste infrastructure is, is an interesting one. Um, somebody was earlier talking about whether um, commercial waste should be dealt with with municipal waste of the same characteristics. Clearly the answer is yes. However, the, the uh, municipal waste infrastructure that's been developed hasn't been developed with significant spare capacity for commercial waste. So if we divert from landfill, we'll need to build <coughs> new infrastructure to deal with that commercial waste. I have to say here that if DEFRA had announced five years ago that the landfill tax would increase up to 72 pounds a tonne, many of those new facilities would already be opening their doors. It's the fact that it's only in the last 12 months that they finally told us what the landfill tax is going to be in the long term, that the financials now work and justify the uh, construction of those facilities. So what are the changes we'll see? We're talking about the drivers. What are we going to see in the future? Um, clearly, precise timing is uncertain. And uh, you know, anything about the future is uncertain, but I'll give you my perspective on this. I think you'll find more and more local authorities will collect food waste separately, um, probably for anaerobic digestion. Uh, that will mean that the residual waste that's left behind can be picked up fortnightly without any issue of flies or rats or rodents. Uh, also, the residual waste that's left behind will be cleaner, which will give more opportunity for it to be recycled. I think mixed plastics will get collected by more and more local <coughs> authorities. There's a real demand from residents. The residents don't understand that there are 26 different polymers in their bin. They just want to be able to recycle plastic. They don't, they don't want to read the printing on the bottom of the carton that says this one's PET, that one's HDPE, etc. They want to know plastic can be recycled, something else can't. We've got to make it simple for people. So I think uh, the councils will respond to that demand from residents and we'll see these plastics being recycled. Glass. Um, a lot of glass at the moment goes into the aggregate sector. Uh, that's clearly beneficial in that it uh, avoids digging out virgin aggregate. But there's a, a much bigger environmental win to be had if we could use glass for making new bottles. That means it needs to be colour sorted. Um, if you had a blank sheet of paper, I think you'd probably want to start out with green banks. That's not the case, but we need to look at ways of collecting and colour separating glass in order that we can uh, turn it back into new bottles. I think wood waste will increasingly get pulled out of the uh, waste stream. Uh, who wants to pay a heavy landfill tax for getting rid of wood waste when it could be a good source of fuel? Uh, I think that over the next five years, you'll find a, a large number of new facilities developed for burning wood waste and generating energy. Um, if all the plant, plants that have been announced get built, then there'll be far too many. Um, but that's something to, uh, to watch. Closing <coughs> recycling, more and more using the materials um, to go back into the same form that they started in. I think it's mentioned earlier about the, uh, the milk bottle. Um, yeah, you want the milk bottle to be able to process back in food grade material into a new milk, milk bottle. It makes sense that closed loop recycling, Dagenham, for example, they're doing a great job of taking all our plastic bottles, uh, the soft drinks and the milk bottles, and then going back to be made into Marks and Spencer salad boxes, Griffith drinks, bottles, etc. Uh, so it's uh, going around the full circuit and not just ending up as a, a traffic cone. Um, I think the trend for greater commingled collections will continue. Um, more and more councils are starting to do that. Um, it's easier for residents, and at the end of the day, um, the real issue is how do you get more residents to recycle more material? And you've got to make it easy for them. And the evidence is, I think, that the LGA have seen with their members that those people who have been coming with the collections have seen a higher participation rate. Lots of new entrants in this industry uh, and consolidation. We've seen consolidation. Uh, the major waste companies have absorbed each other and picked up some of the smaller players. I think you'll see in the next five years uh, the energy companies getting involved. They'll want to use the waste as a fuel and you'll see the big uh, electricity <coughs> companies there. I think you'll see the paper companies getting involved. Um, the paper mills are starting to build their own recycling plants. So some new faces and new names around the table. 
CI recycling by small and medium sized enterprises. That's an interesting one. Um, often said that the services aren't there. I think the major players in the industry have been slow to address the needs of the small uh, businesses. Having said that, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of evidence that a lot of small business people uh, take their waste home with them and put it in their bin, uh, or they take it to the civic community site in the back of the state car. Um, and we can't compete with those prices because it's clearly free. Um, but at a, at a reasonable price, I think we'll be there to offer the service that's needed. Recycling incentive schemes, I won't say much about. I think it's the right way to go, but I know that Mutual and Terry are talking this afternoon on that. Hybrid vehicles, whether that's uh, electric or biofuels, we're experimenting with a number of different uh, new vehicles in London, particularly. And we'll roll those out as they uh, prove themselves. PFI contracts, very important in developing the infrastructure for municipal waste in London and elsewhere. And clearly, in, in addressing those, we'll need to take account of the recent document issued by GLA on the uh, municipal waste strategy, uh, some of which um, is far from clear yet, so we'll need to uh, be active in the consultation and get some clarity out of that uh, process. Carbon targets, I mentioned glass. I wouldn't be surprised that you'll find within five years you've got a two-tier PRN where you get a higher value for glass that use, is used in remelt. A lot of new technology trials. Um, a lot of people wandering around our industry at the moment with very nice colour brochures with great artist impressions. When you ask to see the plant, um, they take a step backwards. Um, some of these technologies work and some don't. Um, and we're certainly very keen uh, to make sure that we're only backing the ones that do work. Going forward, um, we've got a couple of politicians here today. Some of the things that we're looking for as an industry um, I think there'd be a pretty good consensus across our industry. We're looking for strong enforcement of the new environmental regulations, but that means adequate funding for the Environment Agency. We can't expect to introduce more and more new rules, uh, higher landfill taxes, and then not have any, anybody enforcing it. Because a higher landfill tax creates a greater incentive to fly tipping. The European Waste Framework Directive, it's not entirely clear that Brussels and Whitehall have the same interpretation on things like commingled collections, and green waste, so we're looking for some clarity there. Um, we think it would be a lot easier to um, help residents understand uh, recycling and participate in it if there was some greater degree of standardisation. Now, every area is different and there will need to be differences, <coughs> but if we could at least collect the same materials and maybe use the same colour bin sometimes, I think that people would be less confused. Planning was talked about today. Uh, we would like to see a faster planning process but we do want it to be subject to local democracy. So the real issue is that if we're going to be told no, fine, that's local democracy, but let's find out that it's no in 12 months and not 12 years. Incentives I've talked about, uh, we think CHP on energy and waste plants is an excellent idea, but it's not always possible. So I'd suggest that it should not be mandatory. Um, retrofitting miles of pipe work to take hot water at a million pounds a kilometre doesn't always work, either in terms of digging trenches and digging up streets or, or financials on it. So, but uh, places like new towns, excellent idea. Landfill bans, uh, there have been announcements about potential landfill bans recently, including one on aluminium, which I found extraordinary because the, the landfill ban idea was floated at the same time as the price of recycled aluminium reached 800 pounds a ton. Um, I'm not quite sure why we'd need to ban something, but uh, we can avoid paying a 72 pounds landfill tax for and then sell for 800 pounds a tonne. So perhaps there's new legislation coming on gold bars and diamond rings as well. Um, I really do think that the landfill tax will do the job. Um, I think encouraging recycled content for the reasons so well explained by uh, Alan earlier, we're absolutely behind that. We think that uh, you know, RAP's done some good work in this area and this. We really would like to see the materials that we collect and sort put back into products in the UK. Um, the metals in incineration bottom ash is an interesting one. Um, if we take the metals out on the way into the kiln, they count as recycled. And if we take them out on the way out and put them to exactly the same circuit and sell them to exactly the same metal dealer, they don't count as recycled, um, whereas they do in Europe. So when we compare our recycling performance with Europe, we should recognise that the stats aren't apples and apples, and we're doing a little bit better than people might think we are relative to our European neighbours. Uh, municipal solid waste redefinition. Um, government's got plans to uh, change the definition to include 
uh, trade waste with similar characteristics to municipal waste. I think it makes sense. Uh, it fits in with the European definition. Um, but one thing we don't seem to have addressed yet is that currently <coughs> if the municipal waste truck picks up the trade waste from a local corner shop, um, it's deemed as pre-treated under the uh, pre-treatment regulations. If a commercial waste truck goes to the same uh, facility and picks up the waste, it's not deemed as pre-treated and has to go through a sorting part first. Um, it's not quite clear how changing the definition will, uh, will impact that particular issue. Always pleased to hear from people. If you've got questions and comments, I'll be around for the coffee break and the networking afterwards. Um, so let's take to get in touch. Thanks very much.